historical Japanese flood control mechanism of Kasumite has been reevaluated and is expected to be used as an effective NBS measure for flood control throughout river basins in combination with ordinary embankments. Since ancient times, Japan has experienced many river floods due to its geography. With the development of farming, rice fields were created along many rivers, and consequently, residential areas were also built close to these rivers. Embankments were then constructed in an un unplanned manner to protect only essential areas. As a result, open levees and topographically flood-prone areas existed along the river, and during floods, inundation was naturally controlled by the surrounding rice fields. Open levees have the advantage of being adjustable to larger floods by different levels of overflow, whereas there must be a flood threshold for conventional concrete closed levees. They can only contain the flood up to the limit that is calculated. However, as Japan's population increased and land use plans were developed, embankments were built so that people could live close to rivers. The law created a system where continuous levees could protect more people and property. However, due to the unpredictable amounts of precipitation, localized heavy rains, and increased inflow due to development in upstream areas, some levees have broken, causing extensive damage. Other issues have also come to light, such as the destruction of river basin ecosystems and agricultural landscapes due to establishment of levees. Kasumite is a flood control mechanism that historically has been developed to suit the topography and climate of Japan. The method of dispersing the river flow to unused land or farmland when the flow rate increases is an NBS that has been nurtured over a long time, along with the development of rice farming with the recovery from flood damage called adaptive recovery. However, with modernization, many of these kasumite have disappeared from major rivers and were replaced by gray infrastructure. So it became difficult to reconstruct kasumite. People should recognize that there is always a possibility that continuous levees, a type of gray infrastructure, can be developed as population becomes dense with economic development. But people should also consider carefully if the levees should be connected before the construction. The Kasumite is not a complex technology. It's a simple mechanism that makes effective use of the land's topography. With gray infrastructure, it's necessary to pump the overflowed water back into the river. But originally, when Kasumite was there, that overflowed spot was a point of discontinuity, and the overflowed water would return to the river mainstream naturally. The point is that new technology is not necessarily superior in cost and efficiency, so it's essential to use it in combination with the historical way of flood control. Topography and land use information, such as how close residential areas are to the river, can support the decision on how to combine green and gray infrastructure in a hybrid approach. It's technically possible to make a continuous levy discontinuous, but in reality it would be quite challenging to do that after the construction. As densely populated areas increase in river basins along with economic development, the state is mandated by law to create a series of levees to protect the lives of these people. As a result, when larger floods occur, the levees are raised, which can lead to a vi vicious cycle of increased damage. While Kasumite can reduce massive flood damage, they might cause frequent small inundations to the area, which has legal implications and requires legal interpretation and cultural background that allows for this. It is vital to create a system that can respond flexibly when you design social mechanisms such as laws and policies. It's also required to get the agreement of the stakeholders, especially those living near the point where the river overflows.